Hey, Sam from 3D here. In this video, we will learn what is a node system, why it is cool, and how to use the shader nodes in Blender. A node system is essentially a visual way to program stuff. In Blender, we mainly use it to create or configure material. This is how it looks. Each one of these blocks is a node. All we need to do is connect the blocks we want to, to create some. In Blender, the color of the socket does matter. Yellow is for color data, gray is for numbers or black and white data, and purple is normal data. Normal tells in what direction a face is pointing. You will likely not touch purple sockets often, so don't worry about it for now. Blender also has something called geometry nodes. It's used to control pretty much anything in the 3D scene. It can be used to create grass fields, flying leaves, the possibilities are endless. However, it is beyond the point of this video. There are two main benefits of using a node system. The first one is ease of use. If we didn't have nodes, we would either need to code this by hand, which requires coding knowledge, or be very limited on what we can do with a couple of sliders and parameters. The second thing is that nodes are modular. This means we can change anything at any time and it will update the chain. We don't need to worry about the setting of value, not liking it and having to control Z all the way back or even start again. This modularity is also what allows us to create pretty complex materials by connecting these nodes. Think of it like a Lego blocks. You will connect the pieces you need for the desired result. But I hear you screaming. I don't know what nodes I need for doing X material. Don't worry. I'll show you the most used and the basic nodes. You can either experiment, which you definitely should by the way, or just look online. Blender, procedure or X material. You will likely find what you need in no time thanks to this amazing community. Now let's get to Blender. As always, you can find this character on the description below at characters.design. You will probably notice that the layout has changed. You change the layout, you come over here on top and you click on one of these. In this case, we want the shading workspace. And to make our view a little bit cleaner, I'm going to click here to hide these little two balls and the cursor that was right here. I am at the material preview mode. Before we start messing with the materials, head over edit preferences and look for node wrangler. On the air on tab right here, enable it and it should automatically save. But we can click here and click on save preferences. Now I can close it. That's very helpful add-on and I'm going to show you why in a bit. Let's click on this little bean bag and that will bring us this area right here where we can see what material we have selected. You can also see what material we have selected on this part. To move around the node editor, use the middle mouse button. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can already see all the properties that we talked about in the previous video. So let's say I want this bean bag to be blue. I'm going to click here and I move it to blue. I can change how bright it is. I can also use hex values. I'm just going to stick to the color wheel and select the cyan color. I like that color by the way. If you saw the other video, you should already be familiar with the, all the material properties. We have roughness, Metallic. Well, that was kind of cool actually. Transmission to make it look like glass. Transmission is not going to work right out of the box because we need to enable it on Eve. Eve is a rendering engine and we are going to talk about rendering engines in a future video. So for now, I'm just going to turn it off. Pull Metallic down and move this up to one again. Okay, let's change the color of his shirt to purple. So I'm going to click on it. You can see that we don't have that orange outline. That's because we toggle this off, but it is selected. So let me turn it off. I'm going to click on the base color and move it to purple, maybe a little bit darker. Now his shorts is looking a little too similar to the beam bag. So let's change its color. Going to click on it and we can see that we now have the materials for his skin instead of the shorts. If you look closely right here, you can see that this object actually has two materials. Let's click this again so I can show you. And you can see that his legs and the shorts are actually a single object. So we have two materials on it. In order to change it, just click here. You can also select the material you want by clicking on this little drop down and selecting here. Or just type the name that you want. And let's make the shorts. I don't know. Red. I'm also going to change his shoes. His shoes is another object that has two materials. You can see that top and the bottom which is white. Let's make the, the bottom black and make the top, uh, I don't know, green maybe? It doesn't look the best, but this is just to show you how it works. His shirt is looking a little too simple, so I'm going to click on it and let's start adding notes. Now we can start playing. Press Shift A and you can click on the search 
and search for the node that you want or shift A and look for the node you want. I want Musgrave texture. I'm just going to click on Musgrave. In order to know what the node looks like, you are going to press Ctrl Shift and click on the node. Remember that for this to work, you need to have the node wrangle add-on enabled. I'm going to play a little bit with the scale. Detail. I'm just playing around, I'm not doing anything specific here. You can play with all the settings and they will update in real time. You also have other types of Musgrave texture. This one looks like worms. Each one will look a little bit different. I'm just going to leave it as FBM. And this 2D, 4D also changes how it looks. If you have 4D though, 4D adds another slider, which is basically a seed value. If you drag this, you will see that it will change. It won't change the other parameters, but it will change essentially where this is in the texture. I'm going to leave it as this. I'm going to Ctrl Shift click to principle BSD fee again. So it's plugged back on. And now I want this to control a color. So I'm going to press Shift A, click on search and add a mix and mix RGB. I'm going to plug the height, which is the black and white data into vector. Plug the color into base color and we can see that absolutely nothing changed. I mean, it became gray, but that happened because if you look here, you can see that we have two colors lost and they are both the same. So it just need to change one of them. Let's make a purple and black shirt. This is looking good, but I want to crush these values a little bit. Meaning I want more purple and more black. To do that, let's add another node, color lamp. And if you just click with your mouse, like on this little node, it will add right in between. If I visualize this node by pressing Ctrl Shift and clicking on it, you can play with this and it will change how the texture looks. You can also click here and change a little bit of how the fell off looks. This spline looks a little more smooth than linear. I'm going to crush this in. Remember that we are using this as a factor. So white would be purple and this dark blue here, which I thought was black, will be the black. If I now visualize the principal shader, it actually is the other way around. If I do want to invert this, I have a couple of options. I can click here and click on flip color ramp, which would do that. Or I can use an invert node which will have the exact same effect. I like to use the invert node to keep my visual a little more organized. I'm going to change this to black though. And I end play with this value. So it looks more like I want to. A color ramp is not stuck to black and white. You can change colors here, but since we are playing with just a factor, which is black and white data, it makes no sense to change. So I'm just going to leave them as black and white. And now, if I check the principle, it will have some more texture on this shirt. Let's add a little bit of variation on the reflections of it. So let's go here, Shift A, and I'm going to add a noise texture. And let's visualize it. For me, it looks a little big, so let's just play the scale. About 20 would be good. Increase the roughness, detail, and so on. You are going to understand what all of these parameters do once you go ahead and play with them. That's why I said it's important for you to start trying to make your own materials. For example, if you don't know what distortion does, just drag it up and see what it does. Well, it distorts. In this case, it's quite obvious, but other things are not that easy, like roughness basically makes it sharper. Put it like that and drop the distortion a little bit. I want to plug this into the roughness. Let's go ahead and plug factor into roughness. Oh, by the way, we can also check its color and noise. Texture is always colorful like that. Let me visualize this again. And now you can clearly see that we have difference in the reflections due to the noise texture. If you think it's too much reflection or too little, we have a couple of ways of changing that. I'll show you the main one now using the mouth node. Let me plug this into the roughness. I'm going to change the model here to multiply. These are all math equations. Multiply. If I visualize it, you can see that it looks a little bit darker than this one. So it will so it will look more reflective. Try this value as a roughness slider basically. If it's set to 1, I will look exactly like this one. No differences at all, so it will reflect the same way. If it's 0, it basically goes zero roughness. I'm going to put this to 0.8. I want it to be a little bit rougher. These are the main notices you will ever use. There are many others, but the main ones are definitely these that I showed you, especially the texture notes, color, ramp, mix, and math. 
let's do a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to add a texture, a Voroni texture. I'm going to visualize it, make the scale bigger, get a color ramp. And I'm going to crash the values. So I only have black dots and invert. Now, why I'm doing all of this? Simple. I want to connect this to the emission. So let's connect it to emission strength and change emission to green. And that's cool. It looks like it's emitting a light, but I have no control over how much it's emitting. That's where the math nodes come in. It works the same way. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it and just drop it in the middle and I can increase it. In order to have more of a bloom look, click here on render properties. I need to change this to Eve and just enable bloom. And there we have it. It looks like a glowing t-shirt. This is just a quick example of how you can connect these nodes to create different materials. Hey, Sam from the future here. I realized while editing this video that I didn't show you how to use the normal socket. Let's do that right now. We are going to use this noise texture to drive a height map to the normal. I'm going to plug into normal and change the emission to black so we can see it a little better. Now, if you move around, you will see this weird result. That's happening because we need another node. We need a bump node. So shift A, let's add a bump node, get this no needle and plug in it into the height. And I have a wrinkly shirt. Remember that this bump node is being driven by this noise texture. So if I change it, everything else will change with it. And I can change the strength here. If you saw my last video about materials, you know that bump is nothing but black and white texture. This noise texture is black and white. And that's why we can use it as height map and plug it directly into the normal. So we have the wrinkly results. Now back to the original Sam. And that's it for the basics of the node system. As always, I encourage you to play with the settings. Maybe try to color the toy car that we did together in the past. If you are feeling a little bit more adventurous, look online on how to make a wood material, for example, and try to follow along and understand the theory and the techniques behind of these nodes and why you are doing what you are doing. That's it, folks. I see you in the next video. If you want to learn more about Blender, go to our YouTube channel. If you want to see more of our 3D libraries go to 3d.design if you want to use the character which we used in this video go to characters.design if you want to be around like-minded people just go to our discord server that's it folks thank you so much stay creative and see you in the next video bye